welcome to the Crypto Traders Podcast, simplifying cryptocurrency for traders and investors around the world. Subscribe for interviews with developers, market updates, and a professional look at the future of money. You've come to trust Matthew and Kurt to filter out the noise across social media. Now you can listen on the go. Without further ado, here's the Crypto Traders Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Crypto Traders Podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, you get lovely video, but if you're listening audio, you will see that there are three of us today as we are interviewing Alex Mashensky. Is that right? Yes. Perfect. Mashensky. All right. From, uh, <laughs> from Celsius, which is the premier lending platform in the blockchain space, looking to make all other lending institutions obsolete. I'm Kurt Walker Jr. here with Matthew John, and we're looking forward to uh, maybe a 30, 40 minute interview with Alex to learn about Celsius. Alex, how are you? Great, great. I'm uh, having fun today. Very good. Matt, how are you doing over there? I'm doing good. I'm excited to dive deeper into the loan industry, pecking away sure. with uh, some questions for Alex. Absolutely. So, uh, Alex, what exactly, what is your role? I know you're the CEO, but what does the CEO of a blockchain lending startup do? So Celsius Network, um, I think, is the only uh, organization in the crypto world today that really uh, is focused on uh, providing everything in the best interest of its members. So if you think about uh, Ethereum as an organization that is uh, dedicated to enabling smart contracts and, and so on, and Bitcoin enabling uh, store value and so on. And what we try to do is really create almost like the Costco of uh, the crypto world. So if you, when you, you, when you become a Costco member, uh, you basically get access to a warehouse full of great products that you know are all the best quality and the lowest price. Mm -hmm. And we kind of created, curated the same type of services financial services for the crypto community cool. and the reason the reason i'm doing that is is that uh, as someone who got into the crypto world in 2013 uh, i don't see us uh, crossing the chasm and getting to mass adoption unless we actually take products that everybody in the world needs and bring at least 100 million new users into the crypto world because today most of the people that are coming to crypto are either speculators or anarchists or libertarians. They're not here because they need a loan or because they want to earn interest or sure. because they want to pay their bills. Sure. Uh, do you have a background in traditional finance or how did you get into this side of things? Uh, my background is in disrupting things. So right. I, uh, <laughs> uh, I uh, done seven startups before Celsius. Uh, one of them was Arbinet. Arbinet uh, was the first company to create voice over IP. So I wrote the protocols, invented, the, uh, wrote the patents back in 1994. Very cool. And today, three and a half billion people use something for free that they used to pay two or three dollars a minute for. <laughs> so, sure. so, so if you think about going from VoIP to MoIP to money over IP, you can see how relevant all these things are. I'm doing the same thing. I've done in transportation or in, uh, in the telecom world or in the New York subways. I'm, I managed to bring wireless to the New York subways after 100 years of no connectivity <laughs> underground. Sure. Uh, with a company called Transit Wireless. So all these things are about bringing, giving the power back to the people, right? And, and, and this conversation wouldn't be possible without voice over IP, right? And it definitely would not yep. be free. For sure. Very cool. Uh, are you friends with uh, Jeff Pulver? Yeah, I, I know Jeff very well. Uh, I know Jeff claims to be the father of VoIP. <laughs> yep. So uh, I must be the grandfather because, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, in, I wrote the patent in 1994. I think Jeff's first uh, Vaughn conference mm -hmm. was in September uh, 1996 in Boston. And okay. I was a keynote speaker there. Okay, cool. So, we met him. We met him very briefly in Chicago at a at a blockchain conference about three or four weeks ago, and uh, it was interesting, like hearing him talking about VoIP as well. So it was cool to uh, to hear that, and then hearing that that's your your background as well. I had to had to ask because I, I guess you could have been mortal enemies or something. Also, yeah. So. It, it, 
And, and it's funny that, that's right. And it's funny that both of us ended up in crypto after uh, 25 mm -hmm. years, you know? Sure. It's because you are futurists. You're always Absolutely. one step ahead of the crowd. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So, all right. Uh, first question about it. What, uh, how, does, how does Celsius differ from, say, Salt or Nexo or some of the other platforms in the crypto space that seem to be looking for the same uh, general market? Right. So the concept is very simple, right? You have a little bit of crypto. Uh, you want to, uh, you need some dollars. Instead of selling the, uh, selling the crypto, why don't you take a loan against the asset? Mm -hmm. uh, but when you dive into the details, there's a big difference between the different providers. So, for example, um, um, both Bo BlockFi and Salt have uh, uh, investors that are uh, basically gave them money, charge them 15% for that money. Mm -hmm. And they're like hard money lenders, right? They have to right. basically extract the profits uh, out of their uh, um, uh, borrowers and give those profits back to the investors that gave them the money. Celsius, sure. Celsius creates a pool of BTC. So we have depositors. We have people that give us BTC. Mm -hmm. uh, against that pool, we borrow dollars from a financial institution. Our cost of capital is much, much lower than SALT or BlockFi. And we lend it out to members of the community. So just like a community bank would take a deposit from one person and issue a mortgage to another person, mm -hmm. uh, Celsius Network takes BTC deposits and issue dollar loans against the BTC deposits. And the income, the interest income that comes into us goes out back to the community using the blockchain, sure. right? So, so we actually use the blockchain for its intended purpose of redistribution of wealth mm -hmm. uh, across the platform. Very cool. So very um, big, very big difference, yet very small right. difference, you know? Yeah, it's, it's key. It's a, it's a crucial small difference. Um, so what is the governance of Celsius? Is, is it a private corporation or is it some kind of a DAO or, or how is that managed? So we, we thought about, uh, you know, when we were creating Celsius, obviously everybody was uh, creating a nonprofit in mm -hmm. Singapore or in Switzerland. And I went to Zug. I spent a few days there with the meeting with the lawyers and all the community guys and everything else. And and uh, been there several times. It's a great city. I love the lake, you know. Sure. <laughs> uh, But uh, we realized that, that you know, before, before Celsius, uh, I tried retirement and uh, that was the most unhappy period of my life. You know, I, I joined a few boards of several nonprofits and, and uh, even though they were all good causes, it's very difficult to uh, affect change and it's even more difficult to actually get the dollars that you receive and sure. put them to work. Maybe 20 cents on the dollar makes its oh. way uh, all the way out there. So. We, we decided to uh, create a, a very closely held uh, corporation. So we are a for-profit mm -hmm. corporation whose mission and uh, charter is uh, about doing good for its community. So everything sure. we do is transparent. The whole point about what we do is transparency. Mm -hmm. The whole point of the blockchain is transparency, right? So, so what we did is basically said, We, we're not going to just create decentralized stuff. We're going to create centralized and decentralized services mm -hmm. to optimize what we're doing for the community. But everything we do is going to be published on a blockchain. So the function sure. are decentralized and fully transparent and then auditable by the community. Right? So the power of the blockchain is really here is being used to, for both members and non-members to audit what we do and tell us if we're doing everything in their best interest. They right. can see all the deposits we take. They can see all the loans we issue. They can see all the transactions that are taking place. And through all of that, they can tell us, hey, Alex, you promised that 80% of the income is going to go to, to um, uh, depositors and we only see 75% going on. Why? Right. And then we have to explain that, right? So, right? so I don't think there's a single bank in the world today that has anything close to what I just described. No, no, absolutely not. Which actually leads to the next question. You know, lending and banks, like these are really, really dirty words to old school Bitcoiners, right? So almost as bad as trader is today. <laughs> But uh, how do we know that Celsius isn't just kind of like taking a stepping stone and creating your own like brilliant new fractional reserve system that takes over? Right. So first we have zero leverage in the system. Mm -hmm. And the opposite, because we only land 50 cents on the dollar, Mm -hmm. uh, we have twice as many deposits as loans. 
by definition. So okay. the banks take a dollar and through fractional reserves, as you said, issue $10 worth of loans. In sure. 2008, 10 years ago, Lehman Brothers issued $50 for every dollar that they have. They're the 50 to one leverage. <laughs> <laughs> and right. I, know, I know that well because Dick Fold, who was a CEO of uh, Lehman, took me public, took Arbinet, the company I mentioned before. Ah, he was okay. the main underwriter and sure. uh, I, I knew him well and, and I think he's a great guy, but obviously he was just over leveraged and they, right. they made an example out of him. Yeah, yeah, they, they sure did. Well, that's fascinating. Um, so I, so I, to, I answer think... your question, to answer your question, going a big circle around it, a... Uh, Again, look, I, I already tried retirement. I'm not doing this for the money. It's not like I'm doing this right. to try to make myself a billionaire. Sure. Uh, I'm, I, I think I'm a big believer in Satoshi's work. If you look mm -hmm. at our list of advisors, you'll find a name that most people don't know, uh, Scott Storneta, who's the inventor of the blockchain. So mm -hmm. if you read Satoshi's white paper and you go to page nine, there's seven references. Three right. of the seven references refer to Scott Storneta, who's our advisor. Sure. Very cool. So, That's awesome. So, so if you look at what we're doing and how we're doing it and who we're helping and who's helping us, you will find uh, some of the best people in the industry who are looking at this and saying, and again, I'm carrying Satoshi's flag. I'm not, it's not like we invented this, right? Uh, sure. Satoshi basically said, we cannot fix the financial system. We cannot uh, regulate the financial system into compliance. We cannot solve the leverage issue or the fraud issue or the manipulation right. issues uh, through regulation, through, through anything else. So we got to create an alternate universe and a different system mm -hmm. in which we will have full transparency and we will use the powers of the blockchain of open ledger of consensus and so on to create mm -hmm. a platform that is acting in the best interest of the community. Uh, sure. But what, you, what you're seeing is we're already going towards centralization. All the largest exchanges in the crypto world, uh, right. uh, Bitfinex, uh, Binance, uh, Coinbase, they're all centralized organizations sure. that have zero transparency. Right. So, so, so that's I, why I'm pointing with my finger there. That's what the problem is. <laughs> no, I, and, and I agree. I, I think that is a major problem. Um, I, I guess my next question to follow up on that would be, you know, traditional banks make their money by using that fractional reserve in order to invest in other things. So how is Celsius making money as a private corporation if you have uh, more collateral than you have uh, Right, lending? so so if your purpose is to optimize re rewards or returns, and I'm sure most of your community of traders looks at this and says, of course, that's what I do every morning. You know, I, sure. I just create value by buying something cheap and selling it at a higher price. Right. right, finding the undervalued assets and trading them or whatever. That's not our purpose. Celsius' purpose is to build, bring the next 100 million people into crypto. Mm -hmm. So we are much more like WhatsApp, for example, right? WhatsApp had uh, a billion and a half users. They didn't charge anything for their service. Mm -hmm. And somebody decided that they're worth 22 billion and, and you know, Facebook, right? So, so when, yeah. you, when you create a big enough community where everybody is... Uh, it's almost the case also with Costco, right? We use Costco as an analogy for Celsius. Mm -hmm. uh, Costco is the same way. Costco does not make almost any profit. Their entire profit is their membership fee. Everything right. else they're giving to the users at cost. So right. when you do the right thing, people, oh, after a while, it takes people a while, but after a while, they realize that. The, the joke I always say is that after 25 years of voice over IP, only half of the people on the planet using it for free. The other half still insists on paying bills for something <laughs> they can do for free every every day. Right. So it takes a very long time. The, the point, my point is, is that even something as obvious as VoIP, 25 years later, has only 50% adoption. Sure. Now that makes what, sense. Can I can I ask when did you start Celsius? So I I wanted to get into fintech uh, since basically 2011. Uh, for a variety of reasons. I could not find the right entry point. I was like, I didn't want to do another PayPal or another uh, mm -hmm. whatever, right? So so I was kind of looking for something that will present the right opportunity. And and uh, so the idea, the idea for a membership organization really kind of uh, came up in 2016, and then we launched it in 2017. And how many users have you issued loans to since starting? 
So let me explain what we do, because we have three different services. Uh, and and uh, we really launched the service about uh, 70 days ago, so just over two months ago. And so we did an ICO, uh, which started in 2017, end of 17, and we, we finished it in 2018. March 18, and then build the product and launched it uh, just over two months ago. And so we are we provide three services. We uh, pay interest on deposits, which is the most important service we do. So, and the reason we're doing that is because uh, most people don't understand that when they keep their coins on exchanges, the exchanges make money from those coins. They don't pay you anything for it, yep. but they make tremendous amount of money. When when Binance says they're going to make a billion dollars this year. You can take the number of trades. They publish how many trades they do. You can take the fees, calculate the two, and you'll find out that more than half of their income comes from actually lending out your coins, not from or shorting your coins or doing all kind of other stuff, front running you with your own coins, everything they can do to make a profit, True. right? So, so in sake of transparency, again, your community needs to understand that that all we're doing is doing exactly the same thing that Binance does, we just take 80% of the profits and give them back to the community. So the way we, we pay three or four or five, even 7% interest is mm. because we make more than that and we committed to give 80% back to the coin holders. Sure. So if I'm holding, so, let's say Bitcoin on Celsius platform, I'm gonna be earning interest just for doing so? You deposit and every Monday you will get an interest payment representing, right now I think Bitcoin is 3.75%. So you divide that to 52, and that's exactly what you're going to be getting. And it doesn't matter if you have one Satoshi or you have 10,000 Bitcoin, you will get exactly the same this pro, pro rata distribution. Sure. Because you don't treat the big guy like a bank. You walk in. If you're a billionaire, they'll, they'll charge you no fees. They'll give right. you a fancy dinner, give you the tickets to the show, <laughs> a private plane, whatever you want, right? But if you're right. a little guy, they're not even oh, going to open an account for you. So the whole yeah, idea yeah. here is to uh, and we have people that deposited just a few satoshis to test us out right sure. so we can do, get the guinness book of record for the smallest deposit ever made <laughs> i like it so so that's service number one let me describe yeah. service number two yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> service number two is you deposited coins with us you may have even earned interest for a month or two and then suddenly you need a loan you need dollars right you can sell your coins and pay uh, int- pay uh, uh, taxes, mm-hmm. or you can defer the taxes by taking a loan, an asset back loan. Your asset is the Bitcoin, and you come to an organization like ours or two of our competitors that you mentioned, BlockFi or Sold, mm-hmm. and you ask them for a loan. You say, here, take my Bitcoin, and I want 50 cents on the dollar, and I will pay. We charge 9%. They charge 15 or 18%. But it doesn't matter. You you can get dollars and you still own the coins. The coins go up in value. You have all that upside. The coins have a, a, f- a fork. You still get all of the additional coins and so on and so on. So the big difference between what we do and what everybody else does is that, like I said, the BlockFi and Sold go to big investors and they sell them the loans and they give right. them 15 or 18% of their money. And we take any income that comes in and we give it back to the community. So the, re- the way I can pay you 3.75% is because I'm issue loans and because I'm short sellers. People who want to borrow mm-hmm. coins to short pay me sometimes 15%, right? Nice. So yeah. the, yield, the yield is we have a pool of BTC, which is all the depositors. And we take all the income they came in and once a week we say, okay, how much is that income representing of the total pool? 3.75%. 4.1%, 5.7% and so on. So when sure. we publish our weekly rate, that is how well did we do for the community in creating income. And again, it's all asset backed, so there's no mm-hmm. risk. Even when we lend out the Bitcoin, we always take ETH or dollars as collateral. Sure. So there's zero chance of uh, somebody not repaying us. Very cool. So then what and is- the third uh... service, wait. <laughs> <laughs> So the third service, which we just launched a few days ago, called Sell Pay, mm-hmm. is our solution to uh, how do you bring the next hundred million people into crypto. Sure. So today, if I wanted to, you know, to send uh, Matt a few uh, 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 bitcoins or uh, a few satoshis, I'll probably send you satoshis because 
Yeah. You, know, you look like you already have all the Bitcoin you need. But the point is I have to I have to reach out to you. I have to ask you what's your wallet. I have to ask you if it's active. I have to send you a test transaction. My God, you know, I'm already 80 years old. Who wants to do all of that, right? <laughs> so now you can take the Celsius wallet. You can go to the cell pay button that's on the bottom. I can put your text, uh, your SMS, or I can WhatsApp it to you, or I can Telegram mm. it to you, or any... Any of the, I can email it to you even, right? Sure. I, I can uh, telegraph it to you. <laughs> and the point is, you don't, I don't need to know your wallet because all I did is I sent you a link representing mm -hmm. the value that was allocated. And when you retrieve that link, that creates the wallet, automatically opens a wallet for you. And you want to, you want to pull them out and send them somewhere else. Hmm. You can send them anywhere you want, but it solves the problem of mass adoption because now it's instant. If you want to pay for your coffee, you can just put $4.75 and it will instantly appear on the other side without you needing to you read a barcode or do anything. Hmm. It's very cool. It's, it sounds similar to, uh, do you know Cointext, the, uh, the product? I, I prefer to compare it to Venmo. It, well, sure. <laughs> That's cool. So all of that sounds awesome. I, I guess to me, like my, my thought coming into that is like, it sounds like you have uh, a lot of custody needs. Um, so I'm curious, who, who has custody over the coins that are collateralized and, and being uh, left in your, in your custody? Are, are you handling that custody internally or do you have an outside custody partner? My cousin Vinny has a warehouse. I just put it there. <laughs> no, just kidding. We, we use BitGo. We think BitGo is one of the best organizations out mm. there. We partnered with them. I think Nexo is using them as well. Uh, the yeah. Chicago Mercantile Alex Shell is using them. Yeah. Kraken. So, sure. uh, so when, when, when the wallet, when you go inside our wallet and you see the address that our system generates for you, right? Mm -hmm. And that is actually a BitGo address, right? So it's not, okay. uh, it's not something that we create, right? It's, it's, we, we give you, uh, a direct link right into BitGo, right in, into cold storage, mm -hmm. to enable you to um, uh, to do that. Very cool. So when let's say I were to give you half a Bitcoin uh, to to just sit in your pool and, and earn that three point seven or whatever the interest is, uh, is that interest in fiat value or would I be getting interest in BTC or do I get to choose how I, I get my uh, my interest? Here it's uh, it's automated. It's uh, you know you get one percent, mm -hmm. you get uh, three point seven five percent per year weekly automatically. BTC in BTC, ETH for ETH, gotcha. Ripple for Ripple, and so on. Very cool. So Alex, who is um, who is Celsius's ideal client then? Like, is there? I mean, do you want to be lending to? you know, your average person working a 40 hour work week, or are you looking to lend to like absolutely everybody and anybody or, or what, like, who do you want to do business with the most? So look, I, I, I view uh, the blockchain as uh, the future, the opportunity for 7 billion people to join the middle class, right? The majority yeah. of the people on the planet uh, who, unlike me and you, uh, don't have uh, seven credit cards in their pocket and they can pick any job they want. They quit one job because they can get five other jobs. Right. Most of the people on the, pro on, the, on the planet are struggling day to day and they can't provide for their families and they can't even, they go to the bank, they, the bank wouldn't even open an account for them, right? So they're right. either underbanked or unbanked. And yeah. these people leapfrog. They don't go, just like uh, the people in China and India didn't go from, no phone to a landline they went straight to a cell phone the yeah. same way here people are going to leapfrog straight into the blockchain so sure. so our opportunity and it's our mission it's not it's, it's it's something that we take very very seriously all of us i'm saying you guys as well right everybody mm -hmm. who's in the, in the blockchain who's just trying to line their pockets really needs to think about uh, do we have a bi bigger responsibility uh to really take this dream of satoshi's and Scott's tornado and bring it to the 7 billion people on this planet. Like, what is it yeah. going to take? How do we enable these services? How do we reduce the friction? How do we eliminate the minimum deposit or the fact that you need a minimum of X to earn interest right. and so on? So, so what we're trying to do is eliminate the barriers and we are using the millennials in the U S and the rich people in Europe to right. kind of fund the service. Mm -hmm. Right. 
But then the whole point about this is to enable a farmer in Africa whose cost of capital is 30% a year to get a 5% loan, right? Sure. Which will change not just their lives, but also the entire village that they live in, right? right. Because then they can provide for everybody else. And it takes a village, right? I mean, it takes a village to, to do that. So, so we partnered with the United Nations. We announced, uh, I was in the UN speaking just a few weeks ago at the Sustainable Development uh, uh, you know, uh, meeting. It was, and, and we announced both a donation to the organizations as well as uh, their decision to choose us as the pr platform to manage all the cryptocurrencies for them. That's and awesome. I don't know if you know, but the, the Trump organization, one of the things they changed when they changed the tax law, giving people, rich people like me, even more tax rebates that we didn't ask for. <laughs> I'm a frustrated Republican, you know. <laughs> uh, one of the things that uh, also was changed is the ability to deduct uh, do uh, charitable donations. So right. a lot of these organizations, great organizations, um, um, are all su going to suffer tremendous decrease in donations because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the tax benefit was taken away from them. So sure. Uh, one of the best ways to donate is to provide cryptocurrencies because you, you still get the full value. Even if, if right. you get it dramatically, you can pick a day where Bitcoin just jumps up and just lock in the value and get that right. full value. Even if you, if you donated a billion dollars. Sure. So, so we're going to help with BitGo, right? Manage all of these assets for the United Nations and help deploy them. The beauty here is not just, okay, we're going to help rich guys manage money. We're going to, use the blockchain to show who is using these assets because you can use the blockchain now to see if the if the farmer in africa used it or mm. uh the guys that put together the big uh, black tie event and sure. used all the money on boats and planes and right. <laughs> yeah so it, it's interesting uh you know matt and i were discussing um you know, if you have to collateralize your own loan like if i if i need to borrow five hundred dollars i need to give you essentially a thousand like that's something that a responsible person would be able to do. Uh, and I think it's also something that uh, sound money will ultimately force us to do, but it's kind of a generational thing. Like if I were to talk to somebody today who's who needs a loan, I mean, almost everybody in North America, Western Europe, like we're, we're in more debt than we have collateral. So people in that situation are asking for loans to sometimes just pay their bills for three months because they lost their money. And then you got like predatory lending and, and pawn shops and all of that kind of stuff, you know, where it's like, yeah, they're th like, they are the bad guys to a degree, but they also do help people get, you know, down the so road let, a couple me, months. Sometime. Right. So let me ask you a simple question. Someone who already has seven credit cards, they're all maxed out and mm -hmm. he defaulted on one of them. So now he's in a bad, a bad credit bracket and he's paying 29% yeah. on all of them. <laughs> Yeah. And after his paycheck comes in and he pays his rent, the next biggest payment is his credit card payment to make right. sure it doesn't default, right? Do we need to give that person more credit or do we need to teach them how to save themselves? So my father always told me, do you want to learn? Do you want the fish or do you want to learn how to fish? Right. And, and, the, and the mission of Celsius is, is not to give you the fish or teach you the fish or teach you how to fish. The mission of Celsius is to say, hey, wouldn't it be amazing if there was some AI computer in the cloud somewhere that acted in your best interest? And the computer know, knew how to manage money and how to create value and how to extract the most interest and how to reinvest it and do all the things that Warren Buffett and everybody else created their billions on. Right. Why can't we take all these rules, put them into some algorithm in the cloud and just convince people to trust us? So sure. our mission is about the fact that today you want to know how to manage your money. You have to be, have a PhD. Right. I mean, and people with PhDs have seven credit cards that are maxed out, right? right. So the, the, the only way for you to really get out of this, you know, cycle that we're in is to wor work on Wall Street, right? That's yeah. the only way for you to get out of it. <laughs> so, so between the student loans and the mortgages and all the other stuff and the debt, giving more debt to people is not the solution. So what we're, sure. we, we believe that, that we want to reduce uh, the leverage in the system, not increase the leverage in the right. system. Because that's when you get to day loans. You get to day loans where you already leverage way beyond your income 
Right. You're already maxed out and you're so desperate that you're willing to pay 30% for two days because you <laughs> right. don't have a choice. So, yeah. so our purpose, and most people on this planet are good people that when they understand this, they will join us. Mm -hmm. Because I'm an immigrant. Look, I came to this country with $100 in a plastic bag. Okay? Yeah. So, so I, I lived this. I lived months where I didn't have money to pay for my rent. I didn't have money to pay the bills. You know? And so I'm not talking about it like, oh, you know, I, I grew up in a fancy house and I went to Harvard <laughs> and I'm making right. a few million a year. And I'm sure. talking about those people over there. You know? yeah. So you want to do this for the people? you need to do something that they don't need to do anything about. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you try the Celsius wallet, and you know, I'm going to use CellPay right now to send you, you can just test it, see how fast it works. Oh, I'm going to send you uh, 20 bucks right now just to show you how this works. Okay? Let's see how quickly it goes. You want sell tokens or you want Bitcoin? Ah, you want Bitcoin. I know. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even know why I'm asking the question. <laughs> I don't you know? know about All Bitcoin right. though right now. Huh? I said I don't know about what's Bitcoin. Your, uh, right what's your what's your cell phone number? Hopefully. Yeah, just when you out. get it, just say hi. Just respond to me and say hi. Just uh, and tell me when you have it. You have it? Great. Yeah. Open it up. Just say hi. Okay. I don't need to know your wallet. I don't need to know anything, right? So this I need to this, download the app though. You'd need to download the app, yes. It's free <laughs> too. So, but this is what we think the future looks like. It's not yeah. about, it's, it's, it's about people redistributing mm. the goodwill that we are creating again and again and again. And, and I'm, 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 I'm challenging you to send this to 20 people, $1 at a time, and, <laughs> and, and bring new people into crypto, right? Bring people sure. that have never been into crypto and get them to have that experience in one second. They right. Be part of the community. We take away, we melt away all the barriers. Mm -hmm. And we enable people to participate and do good. It's do well and do good at the same time. It's funny. I, I used to do a daily podcast and I, I would say we need to do well by doing good. I would always close with that phrase. So that's, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's crypto close to allows you. Crypto <laughs> allows you to do this without sure. having to work hard at it. Usually you have yeah. to make choices, right? You're on Wall mm -hmm. Street. Every day you have to do bad things that hurt other people. <laughs> sure. It's very rare that you can do good and do well at the same time. Because right. on Wall Street, you make money, that means somebody else lost. Right. But on the blockchain, everybody can benefit. The community grows, everyone benefits. Sure. No, absolutely. So I, I guess my next uh -oh. question then is, what's up, Matt? It looks like I have to verify my ID. We do. You, you have, we have to know who's a good actor and who's a bad actor. So unfortunately, to comply with U.S. regulations, yeah. we have to scan your passport or your driving license if you're a U.S. citizen. If you're not, then uh, we're more lenient. But uh, the point is to make sure that the community is not contaminated with people who are here just to do bad. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the KYC conundrum of, of crypto. <laughs> Listen, crypto even current. IDEX finally succumbed. Oh, I know. I know. There's no way around it. I mean, it's, sure. uh, so uh, I don't, we, to avoid the pain, we decided to do that from the beginning. And, 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 sure. and I think it's the right decision. If you look at Facebook from the beginning, they only allowed mm -hmm. real identities. Right. And, and look at them now, right? Everybody else, MySpace, everybody else allowed fake identities and they're suffering yeah. through that to date, right? So sure. the same thing here. If you have real identities and when I'm sending you money, I know that you're the real person. Right. Because right? it would be very hard for you to fake your all of your other information. Yep. Then um, uh, we know that we can do all transactions together, not just the $20 transaction. Sure. Makes sense. So what do you think, if there was a, a misconception about Celsius that you could clear up, like what, what's something that people say to you or, or about Celsius that you'd like to clear up forever? Well, um, in the beginning, I think people thought uh, they were really focused on profit. Like we were, they were, they were oh, you're just going to steal the money from the ICO or you're going to, you're doing this because you're trying to be even richer or... Right. You know, like whatever. I don't know. There's like all these other reasons, right? So we've sure. been paying interest now for whatever, uh, 10, 11 weeks. And 
people are starting to say, well, yeah, I'm getting my interest, but there must be something else. There must be something else you're doing. This cannot, cannot be just for the community, okay? No one does that. Who is in the right mind is going to try to help the community? Right. So I think the resistance now is, is, well, how come no one figured this out before? This sounds so simple. There's mm. nothing complicated in your business model. Everything you're saying is so simple. It's one plus one equals two. Right. And sometimes even equals three. But, <laughs> you know, like, uh, so, some, so there must be something wrong here because it's just too obvious. It's too simple. Right. Right. And, and, uh, and the answer is, is yes, most things, most great things are simple, mm-hmm. you know, and, and uh, when you do it for the right reasons, then you can find the, the straight path in the easy way. Sure. When you do it for profit, you have to complicate things. Right. How much so, did you guys raise during the ICO? So we uh, raised just over 50 million. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was in terms of like $1,400 uh, per ETH. So now it's much less than that. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we, so you we did are big, Ethereum? We're, we're big hodling believers, oh, as you God. can see. <laughs> so we're carrying the weight <laughs> day and night. So, uh, yeah. And that was anyone in the beginning who, of the year, too, eh? Yeah. Anyone so who it's... wants our crypto, we're just going to drop this on their head. <laughs> so it was 50 million then. Now it's probably under 10. Uh, yeah, it's No, it's, my, it's, it's more, more than that. So we. Uh, but you do Ethereum, were, right? Yeah, but we, we did all kind of good stuff like switch to Bitcoin and sure. blend it out. And all, like there was a point where Ethereum was fetching 18% just for borrowing it. Crazy. So, so we were, uh, we, were, we, you know, I don't know if we published our, uh, right now our AUM, which includes our own assets, is, is just over 35 million. Okay. That's not bad. So my next question then, um, you know, when people talk about, like when I've, first glanced at Celsius, my first, uh, the thing that stuck out was, okay, they've got this CEL token, which is a proof of stake token, and then you're lending. And then, so like my first thought was, okay, is this another BitConnect basically? Uh, Cause I know what they really lived on was the fact that the BitConnect token went up in value. I mean, just magnitudes of exponential growth. Yep. And that's what allowed them to kind of keep their Ponzi going for, for so long. So I'm, I'm curious, the CEL token also like it, it creates inflation and will likely go up in value. Is that factored into uh, the valuation and, and what people are getting back or is it a separate entity? Um, and then what other purpose does it serve? Does the CEL token, do I need to use it for anything or can it just be held or not held or whatever? Sure. No, it's a great question. And, and uh, so let me explain the BitConnect model, right? The BitConnect mm-hmm. model was... <laughs> Uh, we're going to create as much noise as possible. Mm-hmm. People are going to buy our, uh, I don't know what the, what the, was a symbol or whatever, but basically as long as we have more depositors than people withdrawing or selling, mm-hmm. the, the price goes up and we can continue. We're going to just take the new dollars coming in and make sure that we redeem the old dollars going up, right? right. So there is no scenario in Celsius in which any new dollars redeem all dollars, right? So mm-hmm. the only way, for example, if we tomorrow cannot generate any income uh, for BTC, mm-hmm. uh, we will publish a weekly interest rate of zero. And sure. uh, because there's no income and the distribution is going to be zero. And people are going to say, oh, there's no zero, there's zero distribution. You know what? I'm going back to Binance. I'm putting my coins back on Binance. Right. All the coins are still sitting there. Anyone can come and withdraw their coins. And there's never a situation where there's less coins or not enough coins or we use the coins for something else or we mm-hmm. paid this guy with this guy coins because the price went up. The, if we received 1,000 Bitcoin, we will distribute 1,000 Bitcoin. So there's right. never a situation where I use Bitcoin to buy uh, a Bit, uh, BitConnect token and because right. the first guy bought it for a penny and the last guy bought it for $20, when right. I tried to redeem it, I lost 90 or 100% of my value. Right. So you deposit Bitcoin, you redeem Bitcoin. You deposit Ether, you redeem Bit- Ether. You receive distributions, you will have 1.1 Ether instead of one because sure. you received interest and so on. But right. everybody earned that extra income. And whoever paid it to us, the hedge fund or whatever, paid us in additional Ether. So if we receive 10,000 in deposit and then we receive 1,000 in interest, 
there's 11,000 ether in the wallet. Right. Right. And you don't have to ask me. You can, it's a public blockchain. You can go and look at the wallet and see what we have on deposit. Sure. Very so, cool. So now, so we are not in, in any way uh, are repaying anyone with anything, right? If, right? Even if we have weeks in which there's more to withdrawal than deposit, it does not change our business model. The opposite. Right. There's going to be income that is distributed to less people, meaning the interest rate is actually going to go up. So it's a self-balancing mechanism. Right. If we have a lot of deposit, the interest rate goes down. If we have a lot of income and not a lot of deposit, the interest rate goes up. Mm -hmm. But the purpose of the sell token, uh, we published that in our technical paper. So there's four use cases. The first one is the most simple one, which is the Costco use case. You have to have some sell token to become a Celsius member, sure. right? Today, the sell token could be bought on IDEX for, I think, six cents. Mm -hmm. That's the cost of membership, six cents. One token buys you membership. Sure. Cool. Okay. The second use of the token is that you can pay interest on loans with the sell token. So mm -hmm. if you uh, took a loan and you took $10,000 and you owe us $100 in interest, you can pay us in dollars or you can go on IDEX and buy the token and pay us with the token, okay. right? And if you believe the token, you can see all the transaction going up. You mm -hmm. can see how many loans we're issuing. You can say, hey, all these people that are taking loans are going to need to buy tokens. I want to buy it now because it's cheaper now or it's more expensive sure. tomorrow or whatever. So we don't do any of that. We don't recommend. We don't tell it's better. It's worse. <laughs> right. Every person does his own thing and so on, right? Yeah. The third thing, it's a mechanism for redistribution inside our network. So mm -hmm. let's say the three of us are the only members of Celsius and uh, I received 12 weeks worth of interest. You just joined, so you received only four and, and whatever, right? And, and, and so each one of us has different length of stay in the system. Mm -hmm. We actually, uh, the interest distribution, let's say all of us have only one Bitcoin each, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the same number of coins, but... Uh, I joined the earliest, so I will actually get a little bit advanced as a time clock that ticks, sure. uh, that starts ticking from the minute I join. And mm -hmm. as long as I don't take it, I don't, as long as I don't uh, join more than half of my, I got it, I got it. As long as I don't withdraw uh, at least half of my coins, uh, that clock stays uh, and is not reset. Sure. Then, the interest I collected, if I collected it in, in sell tokens, I can also collect the interest in sell tokens. I can decide that it's not live yet. It will mm -hmm. be live in a few months. But okay. I can say, I really like the mechanism, the flywheel inside the uh, Celsius blockchain. I'm going to choose sell instead of B B BTC. Right. And then we start counting how many sell tokens did we give you. Did you keep them or did you sell them? If you sell them, you're not going to get as much interest income as the guy next to you who kept all of his sales. Right. Okay. All right. Interesting. So that's the, that's how it works. So thanks for coming, Alex. We really appreciate your time. Uh, check out celsius.network to learn more about it. And again, thank you so much, Alex. We really appreciate your time. And bring new people into crypto. Don't forget about that. Yes. 100%. Thanks guys. Thank, thank you. you. So, Hmm. <laughs> It's interesting. I, I like I like the idea first of all that like, you know, my first I legit was like, oh, it's BitConnect, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I read through it. And I'm like, okay, no, they're like KYC. They're registered. They're, like, they're in New York City. Well, yeah, I couldn't even get my free twenty bucks without typing in my passport and taking a pic of it. So sure. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm I'll just leave that twenty bucks there. Right. Well, it's interesting though because like it's tempting to. Um, it's tempting to just throw, you know, a couple Bitcoin or whatever there and, and just let it grow because, you know, having some uh, some good taxable income and stuff is a, is a good thing. One of the questions that I wanted to ask him was, uh, you know, how does it differ from a ta like a tax perspective if you're earning interest? Um, is it similar to taxation on like a 401k or think IRA? I can answer or... that. Yeah, I, I, it's probably the wrong but question it, for him it's but. the same thing as going on bitfinex and funding margin traders i mean sure what's the difference the interest might rates might be a little bit different but you know you're still you have the same purpose i do think mm -hmm. and i i want to ask him this because he was talking uh about a barrier of, to entry 
And mm-hmm. his whole thing is a barrier to entry because if you don't have yeah. double the amount of money, then you can't right. get it. So it's unrealistic for people to start using Celsius because right. it's not more appealing than a bank, even though, yeah, he doesn't yeah. want the leverage, but that's well, and that's the point it is it's like we're like our our culture is so like we're addicted to debt worse than we're addicted to you know hard drugs. <laughs> And like he was saying about, you know, those day loans, 30% day loan. And it's like, on the one hand, yes, I understand that they're, they're predatory, they're bad, but some time, like some debt is actually good debt. Like well, if a house, nobody, right. people struggle with a 20% down payment for a house. So sure. they had to introduce 3.5 and 5%. So now with right. Celsius, you need to have right, it's a 200%, 200% of the value of the house in order to do that same purchase and then you're still paying interest so it makes zero sense to me why not just purchase some of that house or purchase the house in outright and then not pay any interest (laughs) right it it doesn't make sense um well it it makes sense it makes sense if you have like if you're managing your money if you're managing the portfolio like an absolute master and and i'm talking like literally i you know even even if you only have a hundred thousand dollars what that means is is you can only actually afford a house that's worth twenty thousand dollars, so then you collateralize forty thousand dollars of it to do the loan and and whatever else. But like, and then you're you're not knocking out twenty thousand dollars in capital that could be used elsewhere. So it's basically we need to completely rethink the way that we do like economic finance if we have sound money. And this is like when people say like, well, why would I spend my Bitcoin if it's going to be worth double in you know six months? And it's like, because people, people can't even conceive of an economy that isn't based entirely on debt, which is, I mean, shoot, it's what me and you have been trying to educate people on for over a year now is like, Mm -hmm. yeah, sound money is different, but you still have to use it if we're going to get it out of the, you know, off the crypto or off the, the dark web, because it does have value, but it's, it's generational and it requires a generational rethinking and re-education about money itself but how how is so debt is bad but how are things affordable without it well i think the response is is that most debt is bad but not all debt is bad like a debt if you take out a debt to start a business that's an excellent business idea then it's not it's an investment right? right like you're investing in an asset like if you're taking out loans to go, you know, buy high heels or or, or <laughs> you know, band T-shirts at Hot Topic, like like that's that's debt, right? So the problem is, is people are walking around with, I mean, literally no savings, and I think it was something like the average millennial is like twenty or thirty thousand dollars in debt if you add up their student loans and their credit card debt, and like nobody has collateral statistically so how is he going to get users for his project <laughs> well i i think that's the thing is like he's given the opportunity to be a like a lender right so if if i were to give let's say i just gave him a bitcoin then he's using that as part of his lending pool and i'm earning interest so it's it's teaching me to be an owner and it's like to be part of the, the ownership class of the financial economy. And then from that, like I, I can, I can accrue more and more. Inter- I mean, what's, what's three and a half percent interest. I, I, I've, if he's paying it out, if it's paid out, was it Mondays? I think he said it's it was weekly. Week. So it's that divided by 52 weeks. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you have a Bitcoin, you're only getting 0.035 Bitcoin throughout right. the year. So then divide that by right. 50. It's like micro payments. Right. right. It's nothing. So, but I mean, but that's the point is that you join, you join that ownership class. And it's funny because people look at that and say, well, shit, like that's not, but at the same time, they're willing to go into debt to buy, you know, gym shoes. <laughs> so like, it's, it's just like, it's a weird thing that like, to me, it's like, Eh, I'll pay, you know, 6% interest or 20% interest or 30% interest on my credit card to go buy gym shoes, but I am not willing to only earn three and a half percent APR. (laughs) And like, it's like, 
well, you're going the right direction. Like you are willing to go the wrong direction heavily, but you're not willing to go the right direction slowly. And it's, it's a, it's a psychology thing. So thanks everybody for watching. If you want to learn more about Celsius, check out celsius.network. Uh, they are a unique player in the space. I, I think lending in crypto is, is new. I, I think a lot of people are confused about BitFi, Salt, Nexo, uh, but Celsius seems like they're doing uh, some stuff a little bit differently. Uh, Alex seems like uh, somebody who really doesn't need to be in the space, which uh, lends him some credibility. Uh, lend, teehee. But uh, he's, <laughs> but he's. Uh, I, I, I liked I liked everything he had to say. But but really, check them out. Celsius Network. It's it's probably not for everyone. But what I liked is that he's educating people how to join the the ownership class of society. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, check out CryptoTradersPro.com. Please send us a message and please subscribe. You can subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher. Google Podcasts and a couple other places around the universe. iTunes. iTunes. You can also uh, check us out uh, on our Facebook group. Matt and I have Twitter and stuff as well. So, so please follow. Please share. Let people know that they can be earning interest on their cryptocurrency using Celsius.network. That is not a lending platform scam like BitConnect. Correct. It, it seems to be legit. Uh, we've yet to do a thorough audit, but they, they passed the general smell test uh, <laughs> <laughs> right out the gate. So uh, time will tell. And, you know, it'd be a good time to jump in early. Um, ride it up. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap it up there. And we will see you guys next week on our podcast. Yep. Thanks for listening. <laughs>